Inflation. This short video is going to look at the concept of inflation, what it is and how it impacts on a business. Inflation is the increase in prices of goods or service which then results in a devaluation of the value of currency. So I bet you've all seen inflation in your lives. Let's have a look at an example that's pretty straightforward. One of my favourite sweets of all time is the Fruity Polo. Now I remember in 2002 being a trendy little business bee, I went to the common room vending machine and the price was 30 pence for a packet of Fruity Polos. However, I noticed the other week when I went to my local leisure centre that the price in the vending machine is now 70p. That is inflation. The increase in price over a period of time of my packet of Polos. Now why have they inflated? Perhaps because the raw materials have gone up, that's a cost of fruit has increased, perhaps the cost of sugar has increased, or maybe just the cost of wages have increased over that period of time. But that is evidence of inflation. There are two ways to measure inflation. One is the RPI, which is a retail price index, and one is the CPI, which is a consumer price index. Now, both measures of inflation use what they call the standard basket of goods. These are the goods that every household, on average, typically consumes on a daily basis. However, the RPI also takes into account the cost of fuel and also the cost of a household mortgage. Now, these figures in the past have actually given a much higher inflation figure because fuel typically can inflate quite quickly. Think of the price of oil and also the cost of mortgages is based on the interest rate and that can inflate quite quickly. So the RPI typically gives a much higher rate of inflation than the CPI. So why have we got these different figures and what do they actually mean? Now, the RPI, the Retail Price Index, used to be used by the UK government. However, they decided to move to use a European measure of the CPI. Now, this is probably because the RPI gave a much higher level of rate of inflation. And some would argue it's the most accurate figure, but it's also the highest figure, and that can create some sort of uncertainty. It also made it more difficult to achieve and meet the inflation target set by the UK government. Whereas the CPI was a figure that was used by most of the European Union. And when we were thinking about joining the Euro many years ago, it made sense to try and converge our economies and have similar measures and indexes to make comparisons against. The CPI figure is also lower. However, some would argue it's not that accurate to the UK market because we have lots of people buying houses in the UK where the European markets tend to be based around people renting houses. And that gives you a real disparity when interest rates increase. It tends to be a lot easier, though, to meet an inflation target when you're looking at your CPI. So I've mentioned this word target. What actually is the target for inflation in the UK? At the moment, the Bank of England is responsible for managing the rate of inflation in the UK. And the current target set by our government is 2%. Now, that is a 2% figure that the Bank of England has to try and keep inflation at. If it doesn't happen like that, the governor of the Bank of England, which is Mark Carney, he has to write a letter to the Chancellor Exchequer, which is George Osborne, and he has to explain to him why he hasn't been able to achieve that figure. And of course, that system happens every single month when they sit and review it. They look at these figures and try and keep them on target and review the process continually. Because the Bank of England has got a few tools it can use to try and control inflation. We'll look at them in a minute. The impact of inflation. Well, high levels of uncontrolled inflation is bad mainly because it creates uncertainty. Now, the problem with uncertainty is that when people feel uncertain, they start to save. When they're saving, they're not spending money. So their spending power starts to fall. As a result of this, businesses start to have to look to cut costs and try and reduce prices. But by doing this, typically they'll start to lay off staff as one of the costs they can cut. And then the economy starts to shrink in size. And the whole process continues because when people feel they're going to lose their job, they have more uncertainty. When they feel even more uncertain, they start to save more money for a rainy day. And they spend even less money. And then, of course, prices have to fall even further. And you get into this process. And that's basically getting into a situation of what's called deflation. Now, deflation is bad for an economy, believe it or not, because it shows that things are getting smaller and your economy is getting weaker. So you don't want deflation depreciation. However, not all levels of inflation are bad. Think logically. If you had no inflation at all, you would never get a wage rise. Because obviously, you're trying to increase the value of products over a period of time to try and cover the cost of increasing wages normally. 
but you need to have a managed rate. So in the UK, 2% wage rise a year would be a great target for everybody to have. And of course, when you have a wage rise, you have increased disposable income levels. And as a result, you can go out and you can spend more money in the economy and you can create a growing economy because you earn more, you spend more, and the economy starts to grow. And this is how the whole cycle works. So what actually causes inflation? There are two causes. You've got cost push inflation and you've got demand pull inflation. Now cost push inflation is when costs start to increase such as like wages, fuel, taxes and they push up the price of products. Now typically the one we see all the time tends to be the fuel one. The fuel element tends to increase the price of oil will go up and that will push the cost of most products up. You also get demand pull. Now this is inflation that happens when demand increases for a product and supply either remains the same or starts to fall. So when you increase demand, you naturally can increase the price. Now companies tend to do this themselves. So this is one that you can control if you get the supply and demand rights within the market. So what do businesses typically do when they get inflation? Typically, most businesses try to cut the cost to get the prices down. This is so they can achieve the same profit margins in an ideal world. They may also try to source from a cheaper supplier, again to enable them to keep their profit margins consistent. Some will have to upset they can't make the same profit margins, they'll have to reduce their profit margins. Others may think, well because demand pull is taking place, they think about the new iPhone when there's a massive amount of demand for the product when it first gets launched, they may actually increase their profit margins, they may put the price up because they know everybody wants one of their products. And that is how they can make more money. So demand pull inflation can actually have positives as well as negatives, depending on how you market your product. And that's where it interlinks. So how do we actually control inflation? The Bank of England actually controls inflation through some really clever mechanism. All it does is controls the supply of money in the economy. They're trying to control the amount of money that the consumer spends and the consumer saves. And they do this just by simply adjusting the interest rate. So when interest rates increase, consumers are going to be more likely to save. You want to put more money in the bank. When you put more of your money in the bank, you've got less money to spend. When you've got less money to spend, you can't go and spend it in a business, or you start to look for cheaper priced items. As a result of that, companies then are forced to lower their prices they want to sell to you to try and tempt you to buy their item. And that, in turn, lowers inflation because you're not seeing the rise in price. However, on the other side, if interest rates are to fall, consumers are going to take the money out of the bank and they're going to spend money. And they're going to be less likely to save, more likely to spend. And because they're going out spending money, businesses start to be able to see an increase in demand. This means that businesses tend to typically start to increase their prices. Now, this is used as a tactic to try and get the economy out of recession. Because in a recession, people tend to typically save because they feel uncertain. So lower your interest rates, it creates more spending. And when your economy is growing too quickly, you've got inflation taking place in the, the boom phases to slow it down, increase your interest rates, and it means you're going to save more money. Now remember, interest rates, I've talked about in a simple form there about savings. There's also another aspect. If you own a home like a majority of people do in the UK, interest rates going up, it also consumes more of your disposable income in paying mortgage repayments. So you've even got less money to spend in that form. Or if interest rates fall, you've got less money to service your debt, so you'd be able to spend more of that money on other items and other consumables. And that is how the whole cycle works. Okay, that's it. You should now have an understanding of inflation and be able to assess how it impacts on a business organisation. Hopefully you can understand what the Bank of England does to try and control the rate of inflation as well. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at BBusinessB and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can tweet me any areas of business you want me to cover in the future. And remember to check out my website, bbusinessb.co.uk.